guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. He is our friend from the five eyewitness news sports team. Inside information with some speculation sprinkled in. Darren Doogie Wolfson, welcome in to the Mackie and Judd show once again, sir. Hello, Phil. Yes. Hi, Judd. Hi, Declan. Always a pleasure to be with you, gentlemen. We're going to get into a bunch of stuff, a little update on maybe where things stand with uh, Jade McDaniel's contract extension. Uh, Dallas Keuchel might be on the way for the Twins and uh, a secret hidden gem potentially for the Vikings. But Doogie, your appearance with us today and moving forward for the foreseeable future presented by our friends at Minnesota Fat Loss. How are you doing over there? I am doing well, Phil. MNFatLoss.com. I am now, what is it, 16 days into my journey, down 13 pounds. Ooh, but as importantly, yeah. or more importantly, I feel energized. I have a lot more energy. The key for me, Phil, is to find a way to beat Drew, my older son. He's 12, affectionately known as Droogie, one-on-one in <laughs> basketball. Heck, he's oh. cultivating his skills right now at the John Tower basketball camp. Ooh. He keeps getting better and better and better. He keeps getting bigger, stronger, faster. He has been kicking my behind. And you've been getting bigger. Have more energy. Until now. <laughs> Correct. So I am working on that. Heck, he takes me yard. I throw him batting practice. I thought I had a pretty good breaking ball, a decent changeup. <laughs> Yet he squares me up. He takes me yard, right? So I need a little bit more velo, a little bit more snap on my curveball, on my slider, right? So mnfatloss.com comes into play it's an easy to follow program there's no counting points heck there's no exercising although i do get my steps and heck i'm looking forward to getting a bunch of steps in next week when vikings training camp ramps up heck i need to have that stamina to follow all those players to analyze what i see at training camp heck that tco performance center campus is so large you cover so much ground the more energy i have the better off i will be but i'm telling you it's a very very easy plan to follow. If I can follow it, you can follow it. MN Fat Loss's unique weight loss program makes it easy to lose weight, get healthy, and get your energy back naturally, safely, and effectively. Many patients lose, I'm looking forward to this, 20 to 30 pounds oh, oh, in a oh. month or two for your free, free private weight loss consultation. Call 763-312-7600. That's 763-312-7600. Or schedule online, mnfatloss.com. That's mnfatloss.com. Dr. Adam Schatzko, D.C. Results may vary. I'm working on that dad bod. I'm telling you. I have an extreme <laughs> dad bod. I'm working on that dad bod. The dad bod probably isn't going away, but it can get sculpted a little bit more. Yeah, it's like a, a kind of a sculpted dad bod is what we're, we're going for here. So awesome, man. So we're looking forward to following your progress. Hey, speaking of following things, you followed around earlier. Oh, was it this week or last week? Uh, Josh Metellus has kind of come on as not only just a good player, one of the special teams aces on the Vikings. He was getting a lot of run just with the number one defense in OTAs and, and mini camps early this offseason. And uh, and Quasi and Kevin O'Connell have both gone on the record saying he's one of the team leaders. In fact, he was wasn't he made a captain for a game after uh, uh, Brian O'Neill went down with an injury? And so you had a chance to spend some time with, I guess, what what I would call one of the potential hidden gems on that Vikings defense. So what can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, Phil, he wasn't that hidden during OTAs during minicamp. It's pretty evident he is going to have a large role in Brian Flores's defense. So yeah, I spent a bunch of time with him late last week. He has uh, changed his training regimen for this summer with the idea that, hey, I'm way more than a special teams player, right? I'm going to be playing whether it's 70 snaps, 50 snaps, but I'm going to play a good amount of snaps on defense. So he's been waking up at 5 a.m. He's been running two to three miles a day. He just recently crossed the 25K threshold for distance he's covered this summer. He does intermittent fasting. like So he's changing his diet a little bit. He's done the fasting for a while, but now he's extending it more so, drinking a lot of water with Himalayan sea salt in the water for some energy boost, wow. some electrolytes, right? And hey, he knows his body better than anyone. He told me at a recent workout, I was feeling hungry because he normally eats like six o'clock at night. 
that doesn't eat again until six o'clock the following night. Oh, so he's like aggressively intermittent fasting. Aggressively, yes. Well, he's thought about making it all the way to 36 hours, but right now, I I intermittently fast too. I just, I don't eat between like uh, like midnight and 4 a.m. Like, like, so I don't eat in those four hours. Uh, His, a little more aggressive uh, on his plan, I guess. Yeah, well, but you know what? He told me he's done all sorts of research on it. He bounces ideas off the Vikings nutritionists, right? He's got resources there with the Vikings. So, I mean, he knows what the heck he's doing, but he told me, hey, at a recent workout, he was feeling a little bit down, so he just he ran over to the county and grabbed an apple, right? So, I mean, he knows his body. I mean, when he can fast for 16 to 24 hours, you know, oftentimes right now, 24 hours, he does it. But, hey, when he feels hungry, he'll eat something. He's also doing Pilates He's on the Peloton a bunch. And, hey, just watching him at Training House last week, holy crap. Like, the workout he went through, and he's being trained by my guy Bill Welly. So Bill Welly and I go way back. Bill used to train Larry Fitzgerald Jr. So Bill has worked with a number of football players going back, heck, decades before him and I formed a relationship back in 2011 or 2012. Bill told me, and I know Bill isn't going to lie to me. He's like, Josh is like one of those guys where, hey – Very few athletes that I've worked with have that sort of level of dedication, that sort of work ethic. And he's just a good dude. Like he sat there, we chatted for 15 minutes on camera, then 15 minutes off camera. He's got an obsession with solving the Rubik's Cube, which he can do in 90 seconds. But he's like, I'm going to try to solve it a lot faster. He was telling us, me and, and my photojournalist, Brian, just a lot about the diet, how he executes it. And hey, he also realizes it's a contract year, right? I mean, this is a huge year for him, for his future. And you think about his role in that Flores defense. I mean, I think about Judd, would this be a decent comp? Patrick Chung back in the day with the Patriots lined up Mm -hmm. different spots. And we saw it at times last year, right? Where Josh would play some linebacker, some nickel, you know, safety. I mean, he told me, Hey, he goes like on my football card, you should not list me as a safety, just list me as hybrid or football player. And I mean, that's been the trend for a number of years that there are a number of defenders that are hybrid, not married to one position. That's how Josh views his role. But I'm telling you, you know, everything that he told me based on what Flores told him going back to minicamp and OTAs, he is going to have a pretty sizable role this year. Well, in the spring, Dukes, at those camps, we saw him used um, at safety at times. And in fact, he is a he is on the second team as a safety with Lewis Seen. We saw him used in the nickel. We saw him used as a linebacker so i mean it does it does look like there are big plans and i think if you were to actually do the safety in air quotations um depth chart right now harrison smith is one and uh cam bynum is two as far as just the traditional safeties but metellus is three like scene was scene was most definitely a second team guy and I, I guess when Seen got drafted, I thought that he might eventually be used that the way Metellus is being used. But I think day one of training camp, Josh Metellus is going to have at least the opportunity to win a pretty big role with first team snaps in sub packages. Oh, absolutely. I think we are going to see at times Metellus on the field with Bynum with Smith. So if you want to yep. view it as three safeties but again like he says hey linebacker nickel whatever not necessarily a safety but i do think there are going to be opportunities for metellus to be on the field with bynum with harrison smith by the way on bynum how about this so i caught up with bynum about a week and a half ago he is spending this chunk of time over in the philippines so he got married in the philippines back in march he's now back over there he's helping with typhoon relief efforts But he also ran a camp in late June, introducing a bunch of Filipino people to to American football. And so he's working actually on getting his wife a visa to come over here. So I know that's a work in progress. He'll be back here like late this week or maybe it's Saturday or even Sunday or maybe even Monday into next week. He told me he'll be back just a couple days before training camp starts because he needs a couple days to just reacclimate to heck body clock. Right. And and the time adjustment and all that. But like he did a zoom with me. He showed me the gym that he works out at in the Philippines. Now he said, it's a 30 minute drive from where he's staying, but I'll tell you what, unbelievable gym. He said, I've got every resource imaginable here. And I saw it. I mean, gym wise he did. And he said, nutrition wise, 
he has everything. So he's been over there since, I mean, when did mini camp end? June 14th, June 15th? Yeah, well, like a month He hopped ago. on a plane to the Philippines that next day. So he's been in the Philippines for a month, but he'll be ready to go, he told me. He said there are no reservations, nothing that should prevent him from hitting the ground running that first day, which it looks like it's Wednesday. I know the Vikings are doing some stuff from a news conference standpoint next Tuesday at TCO Performance Center. And I'm not sure how much they're doing on the field Wednesday. I think it more ramps up next Thursday, then into Friday. Then it's that following week. I guess that would be, what, July 31st? That Saturday's Monday. the big day. Yeah, well, but then when Saturday. the pads come on, right? The pads come on, Judd. Is it Monday the 31st? Yeah, I think they have to give them four days. And, and yeah, I, so I, I mean, that's the, really when the first part when it'll ramp is the up. rookies. And the second yeah. part, I think Saturday is when they're actually going to take the field with the entire roster. Well, yeah, and even today. Back. I mean, there's a bunch of teams that rookies are reporting today. I was yep. with John Michael Schmitz also last week. He was in town doing some training. The New York Giants rookies are reporting today. He told me he had to be at Giants training camp. I guess it would be where in, in somewhere in suburban New Jersey, I think, where, where they train, wherever. He said he was heading back east. He told me over the weekend, I was with John Michael Schmitz last Thursday. He said, hey, I'm heading back to the East Coast on, on Saturday or Sunday because, heck, he had to report – Today, so it's that time of the year where you know fun times. Heck, I had my first fantasy football draft on wow. on Saturday, which is now that's way the too early. Wow! Yeah, who, but okay, very who, much who's in, your who's your first round? You, you you had it or have it? You it's over. Had it? Oh had wow, it. dude! Oh, nine yeah. two months, two two months before week one. I know. Well, yeah. Don't get me going in twenty nine roster spots, but the commissioner is in a bunch of other leagues. It's hard to get twelve people together on any particular day. And he's encouraging, because it's the start of a dynasty league, he's encouraging what he hopes is a bunch of transactions mm. before week one. So he wanted to get the draft out of the way. But how many my number one spots? guy was Bijan. I'm a big Bijan Robinson fan. How many roster spots on a team? 29. Per, per team? Per team. You drafted 12 teams. 29 fantasy players on your team last Saturday. You got it. Who was like the 29th? Like, are there, Johnny Munt? Are there that many players in the league that aren't linemen? Are well, I mean, Dwayne McBride did go. I mean, it's a dynasty league, right? So you're going to roll the dice on any number of rookies, right? So look at every rookie tight end that went fifth round or higher. Laporta, go up and down that list. All those guys went. Look at any running back. I mean, Evan Hall, my guy Evan Hall from Maple Grove High School, Indianapolis Colts running back, presumably taking that Naheem Hines role. This year with Hines gone, you know, back up to Jonathan Taylor. But Evan Hall got drafted. So, How yes. long did this draft take? Five hours. I was out of there oh my three hours, God. 45 minutes. <laughs> what are you auction. doing? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, it was an auction. Okay, make it, it, sure that I was out of there. Yeah, I didn't want to stay for all five hours. Once I had my 29 spots filled, I hit the door. I would say for an, for an auction, that's actually pretty snappy for 29-man rock. I, Laura I, I, should I, throw the gauntlet down and say no on this one. Yeah. <laughs> she should honestly help you out. By you know, though, no. if you said, honey, I'm going golfing, I'll be back in five and a half hours. You know. At least it's exercise. This is twenty. This is 29 players of I know fantasy yeah. football. Come on. Golf's I not really good, exercise. I do. Jameer Gibbs, big Gibbs fan <laughs> from the Detroit Lions. Your wife's Maybe a, a reason why so many people are bullish on Detroit. I Landed thought Dawn him, was the so. same. I like the roster I assemble. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, I'm very much in football mode at this point. Hey, we feel obligated as we creep toward training camp here to mm -hmm. ask you once again about, uh, well, Dal the Dalvin Cook thing, I think, I mean, I think we've all kind of talked enough about he's not, he's probably not coming back, but any Dalvin Cook He's not Cook coming back, update? Phil. I mean, well, he is coming back to town. He's running a football camp at Park High School in Cottage Grove Friday He's Saturday. also still on the 1-800-ASK-GARY-BILLBOARDS yes, all is. around They'll Minneapolis, not. too. Those are all over. <laughs> So he's in town. Can but we no, put Alex Madison's face the on there? <laughs> he is not coming back. I promise you. Dalvin Cook will not be a Viking. I saw Peter Schrager speculate. What if the Giants rescinded their franchise tag with Saquon? What if the Giants went after Dalvin Cook? No. Right. So there's all sorts of endless possibilities. I do not see Dalvin. Terrible. He's idea. not going to do that to a fellow running back. The running back market is broken as is. Yeah. I don't think Dalvin would do such a thing. But, like, hey, whether it's the Jets, the Dolphins, maybe some other team, it's not going to be the Vikings. Dalvin will sign at some point in, in the near future. It's not going to be with Minnesota. Daniil Hunter, what's going on there? Yeah, well, I wish I had more. I think I brought this up previously, but I'll reiterate it now, that my sense is the Vikings absolutely want him back in 2023. Heck, Josh Metellus went on the record with me saying, hey, 
Like, my job is made so much easier yep. because of Daniil. He said, hey, and he may not be the most vocal guy, but behind the scenes, a lot more leadership qualities there than a lot of us realize. So Metellus is like, hey, I hope he gets whatever he can get. I want him on the field this year. My sense is Brian Flores wants Daniil Hunter on the field this year. That the Vikings are willing to give him a sizable bump this year salary-wise. My sense is it's coming down to the guaranteed money, the structure beyond 2023. Now, I don't know if that extends to 25 or if it's just 24, but that there's some haggling over guaranteed money beyond this year. But the Vikings are willing to give him a nice bump for Mm -hmm. 2023. You know, I would... I would be more worried about like 2025 than 20, like 20, if you want to, if he wants a bunch of money for 2023 and 2024, yeah. I'm not really that worried about his health or anything like that. So that would be interesting if they would kind of draw a line and say, I don't know. I don't know about 2024. He, he showed he's back and, and healthy last season for, for me anyways. I think part, part of this though, Phil is it's a lot of contractual balls being juggled right now, though, because you've got the Jefferson thing that's going to need to get done. You've got Daniil. You've got Hawkinson, which I think might be, be the first one to fall. And the guy in Jacksonville signing, Ingram, right? That's going to probably help expedite what the structure is going to be for uh, TJ Hawkinson's contract. But I think part of the issue is all of, of these contracts and, too, the uncertainty of quarterback. That's like, are, are you going to have a uh, cost controlled rookie playing quarterback in 24 or are you going to have Kirk back on a contract? So I don't I think what the Vikings are doing is trying to hedge their bets on who they're, they're going to pay into the future to try and keep some type of cap control. That's my guess. Well, I mean, is there a way like you brought up Hawkinson and yes, there is interest, motivation, both sides to get an extension done. Yeah. But like the Vikings know in their back pocket, they've got the franchise tag for Hawkinson. That if it comes down to it, the franchise tag for a tight end is approximately $12 million. It is not a ridiculous number if you need to slap the franchise tag on Hawkinson. But Jug, could they do something along the lines of, okay, if you extend Hawk now, could you restructure Daniil, give him the raise here in 23, give him unrestricted free agency after 23, but then yeah. you would have, if need be, now it's a healthy number, but you would have the franchise tag in your back pocket for Daniil. Could they do something along those lines? If Daniil's agent is sane, and I've got my questions about him, there is no way that they would do a, a new souped-up extension and allow the franchise tag to, to be used. Like, like you would have verbiage in that contract that said he will play here for X amount in 23 and then will hit the market. If you allow the Vikings to have the ability to franchise him, you're yeah, a worse you're agent that than idea. I thought. Yeah. But yeah. but Hawkinson, you're probably right about. But I just think that there's a lot of moving contractual parts going on here that's probably causing a log jam. And one of them most certainly is Justin. I mean, Jefferson's going to get paid, but that's a very – uh, convoluted contract, I'm sure. It's going to be a huge one. And so just from like a starting point, you have to know what the price of poker on him is going to be. And as we've talked about for months, you guys, that's going to be as good as Jefferson is a difficult extension. Like that's, there's a lot of guaranteed money in that. There's going to be a lot of things that the Rob Brzezinski's of the, the world don't call champagne problems. That's why, heck, they're all back there at TCO. It's a very busy week, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know when, you know, stuff will start to leak. But trust me, behind the scenes, Rob, others in Egan are working very, very diligently heading into next week. And I get it. With the vets, you're right. It doesn't really ramp up until late next week that there's a grace period with, with the rookies. But that's when things start to really get busy. So this is more a time to hammer out a lot of these things. That's why I've never bought. I've heard some people speculate about Buddha Baker trade interest yeah, no. the buddha is looking to get out of arizona hey excellent player don't get me wrong everyone's looking to get out of arizona so that, that yeah. does make yeah, sense. well <laughs> sure but like i've never bought the vikings buddha baker alleged interest or speculation even right like the vikings have enough stuff internally to figure out now they may do a 
on the margins type move. I'm not saying that they're not going to bring in some free agent in the next seven to 10 days. You know, I don't even know necessarily what position, maybe a pass rusher, depending on how the Daniil situation plays out. But like, I don't see any sort of like monumental move externally coming in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, before we get to some other stuff in Doogie's scoop bag here. So I'm not sure if you guys, uh, you know, have noticed here, but uh, you don't get skin like old Macadac here. You don't get skin without at least doing something with it. Okay. I used to have really dry, like dry marks under my eyes and stuff. Um, thankfully, companies like Caldera Lab are here for men. Okay. So the skincare world is heavily female driven. But guys, you don't want to be the sort of uh, catcher's mitt leather skin guy. You know, get into your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. Take care of your face with Caldera Lab. Caldera Lab offers a regimen that, that includes the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. All three products that can help bring a youthful glow to your face as you start to get a little older. Maybe the skin starts to get a little dry. Get 20% off with our code NORTH at calderalab.com slash NORTH. That's 20% off code NORTH at calderalab.com slash NORTH to unlock your youthful glow like old Macadac here and be ready for summer. Caldera Lab. We appreciate them jumping on board here. And by the way, um, you can help us out by using that code NORTH. Again, when you go to calderalab.com slash NORTH so that we can let them know uh, that the Score North community is uh, interested in their product. So, Dukes, what else is left in your scoop bag there? Let's t- let's talk Jaden McDaniels for a second. So, the Anthony Edwards deal is done. Is there going to be a Jaden McDaniels massive contract, or is he better off waiting until next summer? Well, I mean, comparable to the TJ Hawkinson situation, when it comes to Jaden McDaniels, both sides are absolutely motivated to get an extension worked out. But in this moment, I checked just the other day, it's not even an inch off the ground. Like there just there hasn't been any sort of movement on a deal actually coming to fruition. Now the deadline is still months away. We're talking what early to mid October, so they still have plenty of time to hash something out. But right now, because remember Tim Connolly at the season-ending media availability hinted, "Hey, that first day, we'll give an offer to Anthony. We'll give an offer to Jaden." Right? And hey. The Wolves have tried to talk some numbers. It just it hasn't gotten off the ground. But can I see a deal eventually happening? Yes. Now, hey, you bring up the idea of could it make some sense for Jaden to wait, right? He's not a max player. Do you wait, right? Do you sign the restricted free agent, you know, tender, all that? Do you elect to hit the market a year from now? I'm just saying, though, he's still in line. For something north of $20 million a year, I think that's a lot of money guaranteed to turn down when you put your body on the line for a full season. I get it. It's not max money, but it's significant money. That's why I can still see an extension happening. But I'm just telling you in the moment, nothing is on the cusp of happening. Hey, I I know that um, when the Twins signed Keuchel to the minor league contract that I believe there is a July 21st trigger date on, on which he can either be called up and or elect to uh, shop his services elsewhere. He's pitched really well, few too many walks, but I mean, he's done a good, good job with the saints. What is going on with Dallas Keuchel and what's the plan there from the twins angle? Yeah, that's it, Judd. So it's Friday. That opt out date is Friday. He started on Sunday for the saints induced 21 swings and misses. Wow. His stuff has been really, really good right now. Based on his body of work last year in the majors, he's cooked. But right now, he looks rock solid. Chatting with some people with the Saints via text, the feedback I'm getting, just overall, the aura, the everything, the teammate he's been, A+. plus. So his next start is scheduled for Saturday in Omaha, but he's got this opt-out date on Friday. He actually drove himself to Omaha, so the Saints start a series in Omaha today so he's got his own transportation I just think this is trending toward because I've thought this going back weeks that Dallas Keuchel is going to make a start if not multiple starts for the twins that it's trending in the direction of him starting on Friday at target field against the White Sox I do not have that confirmed 
But based on he started Sunday, okay, rest Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days rest, start that fifth day, that that being the opt-out date, that it just makes sense for him to make a start. It's a long stretch here for the Twins. Now, Bailey Ober goes tonight in Seattle. But Bailey Ober, who's been excellent, but you could give him some rest time, either skip his turn next time around or go to a six-man rotation to buy him more time when you look at innings workload compared to previous years. You want Ober to be at his peak September into October. I'm just telling you, there's a lot of signs that point to Dallas Keuchel starting for the Twins this weekend at Target Field against the White Sox. I will say this. All right, I'm, I'm skeptical, but he was still excellent in 2020. He faded, started fading in 2021, and then he was atrocious last year. But he's only 35, and there are several pitchers around Major League Baseball. And by the way, he's a former Cy Young Award winner, so we, we know what his, what his peak has looked like for about seven or eight years. There's a lot of guys older than him that are still having a lot of success as starting pitchers in the Major League. So it's not completely far-fetched that he would have found something, an adjustment, uh, something in his training regimen. So I'm, I'm very curious, skeptical, but very curious to see him back on a major league mound. It's definitely worth a flyer for the Twins. Absolutely. So, I mean, they feel like it's worth a flyer. They felt like that all along. So he's earned it at this point. If you look at his body of work from the four starts, yeah, control has been an issue at times, but he's been pretty darn good through these four starts with the Saints. So I'm just telling you, it's trending in the direction of him making a start, at least one, if not multiple, for the Twins. The baseball trade deadline two weeks from today. The Twins continue to plant seeds. They are going to be a buyer, not a seller. They are looking for a right-handed bat and at least one reliever. Interesting. Interesting. Great stuff here, Dukes. Thanks for coming on again. You got it. All the Twins draft picks. Well, I say all, not all. Walker Jenkins, Charlie Soto, no. But otherwise, just about every Twins draft pick that they plan on signing, they are not signing their 19th round pick or their 20th round pick. But all those guys right now are in Fort Myers undergoing physicals, signing their contracts. So like pick 49, Luke Kieschel, the second baseman from Arizona State, he's now down in Fort Myers. He agreed to an underslot deal, about $1.5 million. All these guys will be on the field later this week for a mini camp. The Twins will also sign a handful of undrafted free agents. I'll get those names at some point later today or tomorrow. It's still trending in the direction of the Twins having no problem signing Charlie Soto and Walker Jenkins. The plan with Jenkins is to get him here in Minneapolis to undergo his physical, meet with the media, you know, sign his contract here in the Twin Cities at Target Field. Then he'll head to Fort Myers. He's going to get the slot. The slot is seven and change, if not a little north of the slot. He is not taking any sort of underslot deal the twins knew that right they could have cut an underslot deal if they wanted to pick somebody else at pick five they knew the cost of doing business so i commend the twins they have the money it's just how you divvy up the money but they like walker jenkins that much that he is going to get paid but there's nothing to worry about him not signing anything crazy like that all signs point to walker jenkins putting pen to paper here in the very near future sign droogie that's that's what i'm calling for sign (laughs) droogie he's working on it trust me Absolutely. Oh. He saw Shohei Otani with the bat You're flip last beers. night. What, He's now trying to duplicate the bat flip, all that good stuff. I'm trying to, to you know, bring down that ego. The ego is too high for a 12 year old. So <laughs> trying to good trying luck. to make sure that he's you know enough level headed. So anyway, it's a game that can humble you very very easily. So he's got another game tomorrow night against Coon Rapids Andover. They typically are a juggernaut, although they lost last night to Coon Rapids. Ugly battle there, 20 to two. So Ooh. Coon Rapids Andover is going to come into tomorrow night's game. Andrew might be in a trouble little there. pissed off, right? So they're going to be very back. motivated to get back on track. So who knows? Hopefully Drewgy can play well tomorrow night. We'll see. Phil, maybe we'll see over there. He's got two more games. He's got a game Wednesday night and Thursday night. Then district play is is cooked before we head to Tennessee for a baseball trip here in, in about, what, 10, 11, 12 days. One more note for you. Actually, two. Well, three on the basketball front. Well, four. Can I get four quick notes in? Jalen Noel. Still waiting out the Damian Lillard situation, but Dallas is a new team showing interest in in Jalen Noel. The Wolves are not bringing back Jalen. Jalen is ready to move on, but Dallas is one team that has registered some recent interest. There is buzz of Khalid El Amin, scuttlebutt, not official yet, but that he may be the new head coach of Anoka Ramsey Community College. He's been the head coach over at St. Thomas Academy, the boys' team, for the last couple years. Jackson McAndrew, 
Elite 2024 recruit from Wyzetta High School. You saw him on display, help Wyzetta win the state championship in March. He announced on Instagram a Final Four of Creighton, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and I'm forgetting one other school, is, but Wisconsin's think, is, is been Xavier? so hot and heavy on him. It is Xavier, you're right. Yeah. yeah, so Creighton, Xavier, Notre Dame, and Wisconsin. He's got some AAU teammates, including Daniel Freetag, that are committed to Wisconsin. I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up at Wisconsin. I just wish the Gophers at some point had decided to hop in on him. It's their own evaluation. Yeah. They decided to go in a different direction. There was other I Big Ten teams, too. Illinois made an Mason offer. There. I know. McAndrew is really, really good. And, hey, he's had an unreal summer, right? He's gotten a lot better since, like, February and March. But I just wish. I don't always agree with Ben Johnson, Dave Thorson, on their evaluation of guys. Hey, they know way more than I do. But Jackson McAndrew, hey, Daniel Freetag, too. Those are kids I would have hopped in on. Doesn't mean you would have gotten them, but I would have hopped in on them. But I've heard a lot of good things, too, about the kid from Alexandria, Grayson Grove. So it's Asima from Cherry. It's Grove from Alexandria. Those yeah. two are coming, class of 24. I just think you could have gone after Free Tag. You could have gone after McAndrew. By the way, on Free Tag, there's some buzz. He announced he's going to a prep school in Southern California for his senior year. I'll just say this. Stay tuned on that situation. Yeah. I will say just on Jackson McAndrew, I have a connection to him and his family, and it just I hear nothing but great things about him as a kid. I do think the Gophers are going to regret not getting in a little earlier. How many times, like if he goes to Wisconsin especially, how many times – has a Minnesota kid gone to Wisconsin with very little interest from Patino or from whoever Ben Johnson now? You're like, well, why weren't the Gophers in on that guy, right? I think you're going to add him to that list if it happens. But we'll I'm a see. big, big fan. Now, hey, Ben and Thor recruited Nolan Winter heavily, Trevor Winter's son, and ultimately Nolan chose Wisconsin. God, so that's brutal. You could be heavy <laughs> in on a local kid, and he still may choose yeah. Wisconsin, but I still think – the way to go is recruit that local kid heavily. If he says no to you, so be it. But I do think there's going to be some regret with McAndrew. Yep. Great stuff, dudes. All right, we'll uh, we'll do it again later this week. There's your scoop session with Darren Doogie Wilson from Five Eyewitness News. All right, boys. Take it easy. See ya. All right. See you, see you dudes. Good stuff right there. Yeah. Let's Look shout out you. our friends, too. Look at you hmm. insiding on goal for basketball recruiting. I know, right? to Declan and I. And I mean, I like, thought you were if, kidding at first, like throwing out joking school names. You were serious. You had no. It was I. No, I had I had caught wind of that list yesterday in our friend circle, and I I hope that he has a dominant college career. I think at this point, the ship has sailed so far on Gophers basketball that you'd almost be like I can say on one hand, I, I wish the Gophers had gotten in on a really good kid here, but on the other hand, like the list of schools that are offering guys like him, why would you ever choose the Gophers at this point? Are you Why pushing would you Dukes out? Ever That's hmm? my question. Are are you pushing Dukes out the door, like very subtly but quietly with all of this, like recruit? I mean, it starts with recruiting, and before you know it, you're giving us Viking scoops, wolf scoops, and I know you no, got some wolf scoops. I, I don't think Glenn Taylor would take my calls. I think that's yeah, going to be a problem. There's for... some pretty important people at Target Center that'll take Macadex calls. That's what there I are hear. there are other important people that that will take my calls. Yes, but uh, and but Mark not Laurie? Glenn. Mark Laurie might eventually. I have not uh, formed a relationship yet with Mark Laurie, but hopefully at some point we can get it. It would be fun to get him on the show. Maybe get him on Flagrant Howls and you know hear how his, his basketball love training to has been going. You know? Love to talk to him. Or maybe get him on uh, a Bennington pontoon, courtesy of our friends at Power Lodge and Miller Marine. Huh? 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 That's he right. He could buy us one. He could probably buy us more than one, actually. Uh, well, I <laughs> mean, with how, with how low the prices are, Mark Laurie could probably buy all the pontoons <laughs> from Power Lodge <laughs> And Miller Marine. Uh, there's still several, several weeks. Sometimes people get all like, ah, oh, it's 4th of July. Summer's almost over. No. No. no there's no. months left of summer, okay? It's called throttle therapy. Why don't you get one of these pontoons from uh, Power Lodge and uh, get out there yourself? And here's the thing, too, about that. Like, August still hot, right? So it's a perfect time to, to be out on your September. Bennington. And then September's beautiful, right? Well, the kids go back to school. Well, like, like, oh, yeah, who cares? All the better for you. Yeah. They're not going to be on the on the Bennington pontoon. You're going to be there with your <laughs> your wife or your husband. You're going to be enjoying it more. No, you're exactly right. Throttle therapy also. Get as much as you possibly can because in December, you're going to say, you know what? I wish I had had that Bennington back when it was nice out. So 
could yeah, be. Yeah, get out there. A lot of time left. You're exactly right. This 4th of July thing, I've never understood it. Like, I know oh, school might be closing in, but if you're an adult, who gives a crap? you got a ton of summer left. I mean, uh, don't make one of the biggest mistakes of your life by not getting out to Power Lodge, one of the three locations in Minnesota, or Miller Marine in St. Cloud, okay? You could regret it for the rest of your life. MillerMarine.com and PowerLodge.com.